Hi everyone, this is Duncan from the podcast Under the Stairs. This particular video you're checking out just now has the archival recording attached to it. The archival recording is from our podography, I think that's the term that we use, um, and it will feature reviews of movies that fall under the 88 Films Italian Collection series. Now, the vast majority of reviews we've done over the last five years have been in audio format and published on our RSS feed for the podcast. We are transitioning over to give you access to all those reviews right here on YouTube under a playlist. Now, we're doing that because we're about to do our first video recording of E88 Films Italian collection release, that being Tentacles. So there's plenty of opportunity to delve into the back catalogue of the reviews here. And if you like what you hear, then please hit subscribe on the channel, leave your comments below, and uh, check out the rich catalogue of over 1,200 episodes we have on podcasts under the stairs on any podcatching device or Spotify that you use. So stick around, enjoy the episode, and I'll speak to you very soon. Cinci, 22 Jahre, römische Adelstochter. Ihr Fall und ihr außergewöhnliches Schicksal sind bis heute unvergessen. Nach den Geheimakten des Vatikans gilt sie als Mörderin ihres gierigen und verbrecherischen Vaters. Dieser schwer bewaffnete Besuch soll nicht auf nur einschüchtern, damit ich Geld ausspucke. Verdammt sei der hartgierige Papst Clemens und seine ganze Bagage. Ich rate Ihnen lieber auf den Satan zu fluchen, der Sie zur Sünde verleitet hat. Ihr müsstet dem Teufel im Vatikan einen Altar errichten. Aus Dankbarkeit, denn er liefert euch doch die Sünder, die ihr dann nach Herzenslust schröpfen könnt. Sehen Sie darin lieber eine strenge Erziehungsmaßnahme unserer heiligen Mutter Kirche, welche Sie da zu packen versucht, wo Sie am empfindsamsten sind, bei Ihrem Geldbeutel. Papst Clemens fängt an zu übertreiben. Erst nimmt er mir ein Drittel meines Vermögens ab, dann befiehlt er, dass ich hier oben verrotte und verlangt als Krönung, dass ich auf meine geliebte Tochter verzichten soll, weil in den Klöstern immer noch nicht genug für ihn beten. Soll er sich doch selbst eine Tochter anschaffen, wenn er mehr Nonnen für die Beterei braucht. Ich hoffe, die Engel verschließen ihre Ohren vor diesen Ausbrüchen. Im Gegenteil, sie sollen sie aufsperren. Richten Sie dem Papst Folgendes von mir aus, Kardinal. Seine Heiligkeit kann wie immer auf den Gehorsam seines ergebenen Dieners Francesco Cenci rechnen. Ist Beatrice ein Opfer des tödlichen Machtkampfes zwischen dem skrupellosen Geschlecht der Cenci und der übermächtigen Kirche? Die Nackte und der Kardinal Für mich ist das Paradies auf Erden, wo du bist. Beatrices Glück mit Olympio war nur von kurzer Dauer. Unerbittlich folgen Mord, Intrigen und die Anklage des Kardinals wegen Vatermordes. Grausame Folterungen, erzwungene Geständnisse, beispielhafter Mut eines unschuldigen Mädchens. Die Nackte und der Kardinal. Dieser Film berichtet von einer Zeit, in der weltliche und kirchliche Macht alles und der einzelne Mensch gar nichts bedeutete. Die Nackte und der Kardinal. And welcome back. So you have just heard the trailer for Beatrice Sensi. Uh, this is um, disc number 55 in the Arrow Video Collection. This is a Lucio Fulci movie. Um, and we're going to get into chatting a little bit about this. But uh, this is a period piece, so get out of the way 
first and foremost. The 88 Films website says Thomas Milan of Syndicate Sadists, Adrian Lorusa uh, of The Man Who Fell to Earth, and George Wilson of Don't Torture a Duckling co star in this brutal retelling of the Sensi family. The film depicts the horrific events that led to the demise of the w- one of Italy's most prestigious families. Through two timelines, we establish how and why this much-loved family were sent to the guillotine in 1599. Based on the tragic true story, Beatrice Sensi, a.k.a. The Conspiracy of Torture, shook Italy to its very core upon its release in 1969, thanks to its strong condemnation of the Catholic Church, and set Lucio and Fulci on a collision course with the graphic violence that would become synonymous with his most popular works. Considered by Fulci himself to be his finest cinematic work, 88 films are proud to unveil the prized possession within the legendary career. Prepare to witness the birth of the Godfather of Gore, finally uncut, uncensored and unleashed for the first time in the UK. The special features on the disc are a brand new 2K restoration from the original 35mm negatives and 185-1 aspect ratio supported by an Indigo crowdfunding. I was one of those Indigo gorgeous. Indigo Gores, is that what we're calling ourselves? Let's just do that. Extensive cleanup and colour correction carried out in the UK. Remastered uncompressed English audio, original English SDH subtitles, a remastered uncompressed Italian audio with newly translated subtitles, an audio commentary by genre expert Troy Holworth, interview with actor Antonio Casagrande, interview with Stephen Thrower, author of Nightmare USA and Beyond Terror. The reversible sleeve with alternate Italian poster. The technical specs, region locked to region B, so it's the UK, Europe, etc. The audio is LPCM stereo, picture is 1080p, um, 185 1. The runtime is just over an hour and a half. Uh, the languages are both English and Italian with English subtitles. So, first time watch for me, did not know about this one at all, and it's, I'm actually extremely excited to be ticking off another Fulci from my collection. I've now seen, I would like to say, a good 60% of Filchi's catalogue of movies um, and it's dense so whenever you get an opportunity to tick one off the list in luscious 2k it makes me happy and that's probably where I'll lean in first the the actual 2k scan or the restoration work that's been done here is pretty phenomenal I really for a movie of this age to look as crisp as it does on my big fancy screen um, made me very 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 happy so much props to not only 88 films but all my fellow indie go goers and we're just sticking with it now who crowdfunded this. This is one of those things where unlike three weeks ago where we did that porno um for lack of a better word, this one feels like our money has been merited, um like put behind a really good project. Although uh, Beatrice Sensi is still a it's a kinda nasty movie in parts and we'll get to that in a little second but yeah the the 2k restoration is kind of amazing and uh, the work we've done on the sound and the color correction brilliant so it's, it's almost worth picking up the movie just for that uh, they certainly went above and beyond to deliver that also just generally commenting on the discs i switched on and off the audio commentary by Troy Holworth, a former guest of this show, actually is on the podcast under the stairs Facebook page, which still blows my mind. Um, and it's great. I mean, Troy knows his shit, so he comes packed with a ton of knowledge. So I had his uh, on and off and several parts of the movie and picking up real insight into the project. I'll probably go back and check out the whole thing just with the commentary on. Uh, the interviews are actually really good. The Stephen Thrower one is brilliant, but then I find that, like anything that Stephen Thrower speaks on as being particularly insightful so he's, he's back doing it here um, I can see in some respects why Fulci is so proud of this because he gets painted with a, a, a rather mucky brush uh, within realistically a decade after this he's making uh, zombie flesh eaters and his career becomes like synonymous with gore and maggots and things going in people's eyes so he takes a, a huge turn a huge detour between this movie through you know like um, Women in a Lizard Skin and um, 
you know, things like the psychic and uh, Don't Torture a Duckling. You know, he's got, he goes through a massive change to end up as the, the godfather of gore. And this being a period piece, it feels like there's a lot of love in the craft here. Um, the camera work in particular is pretty fucking great. And the casting divine as well. I think everyone is acting really, really, really well in this one. You sometimes forget or get cynical with Italian genre stuff about this era that the directors are just more interested in what doing what they're doing and maybe not necessarily pushing the actors to give great performances and that is not the case here. The performances are really strong. I'm not aware of the kind of historical points to do with uh, the Sensi family in Italy. Although the fact that they're, you know, given the guillotine and 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 all the rest that comes from that. I mean, that's I, I, I can imagine. I can, I can I can put my I can put my head in that. Um, and yeah, I mean, it is kind of stingy towards the Catholic Church, but I don't think it's near as stingy to the Catholic Church as something like "Don't Torture a Duckling." So I think Fulci is almost using this as a, a kind of tester paint pot to see if the the colour he's picked will fit a full wall when it comes to Don't Torture a Duckling, which I think is a a much stronger um, and more modern swipe at the the Catholic Church and its prominence and involvement in people's lives in Italy. So, as we're saying that as well, I think on top of that, I think the story plays out in a kind of tragic sort of way. If I'm honest, you watch it through and there's just a lot of characters that are really in it for themselves and being as opportunistic to get what they want out of the situation at the detriment and ultimately the demise of the Sensi family. And it's it's really quite harrowing to watch in parts. That being said, there's a whole lot of kind of period drama conversation. So we get a ton of that in here. So it's quite a lofty movie. Those that just think from, even from that synopsis, which I, I know what they're trying to do, but if you're going into this movie expecting a Filchy movie, that's not what you're going to get. You're going to get something a bit more tempered, a bit more measured, and maybe not necessarily um, in line with the the kind of painted brush of Filchy's work that we have nowadays. So it's, it's, a, it's a bit more kind of subdued in parts and very focused um, on telling a story, which I really like. Um, in a lot of respects, watching this movie reminded me of, you know, how versatile Fulci is as a director. He could really do everything, and towards the end, I think he just lapsed into essentially a stereotype of what a, you know Fulci the director actually was. That's why Cat in the Brain stands out as such a great movie in my eyes. Is he? He was in the joke. He was fully aware of the joke, and he was playing into the joke by then. Um, and that movie works because of it. I think overall, when talking about this movie, it is a lot of dialogue, it's a lot of people scheming in the background, it's a lot of plotting, devising and power plays, which are all done uh, essentially in a way which will never benefit the Sensi family and never benefit Patrice in general. And her ultimate end is, is, is bitter, it's a very bitter pill to swallow when watching the movie. I think Fulci does great though. I think there are moments of violence here. Nowhere near on the level of that kind of 88 film synopsis, but I would imagine in 69, pretty fucking terrifying. Um you know there's there's the practical rape in this this movie. Uh, and the camera makes you feel as uncomfortable as possible because the director is telling you you should feel uncomfortable with not only this abuse of power but how it's playing out and how people turn a blind eye to it as well. The two timeline thing I think is actually what makes the movie a bit more interesting. The fact that these stories really kind of detail the different levels that things will set up and then how it culminates in the, the resolution at the end of the movie I think works really, really well. And it's a technique that, you know, if you are a fan of, like, Jallos and stuff like that, you've seen done elsewhere, like at the Pajama Girl case, which, interestingly enough, also kind of follows the timfall of uh, a kind of central female uh, protagonist. So there's a bit of... I'd, you know, I I go on about how Argento in the movie Sleepless may have ripped off a bit of the Pajama Girl case, and then watching this movie, and I'm kind of now thinking that maybe, potentially... 
and the director of the Pajama Girl case maybe ripped off a bit of Patrice Sensi. So maybe I don't know, but um, yeah, I mean it was it was good to it was good to check that out as well. I mean overall this is a solid, entertaining, albeit unpleasant little movie, and I'm glad that I chipped in the money that I did to help the restoration happen. I don't think this is as good as some of other Filchi's headier work. The aforementioned Don't Touch a Duckling is inf- infinitely better than this movie. Um, and I'm saying that not from a critical point of view, just from a genre point of view. It comfortably sits in a genre I'm more interested in talking about. So it's just a, a, a podcaster's opinion, and I'll stress that out there. But it is a great window into how Fulci really establishes himself and his name and his ability in the 70s off the back of this kind of final piece of the 60s. It does feel like there's a bit of kind of turmoil coming out of the kind of uh, free sex era 60s into the bit more of the kind of sobering elements of the 70s and Filchy's weirdly kind of putting a bookend on the 60s with this movie kind of fits in that, that, that kind of realm as well. When it comes to giving this movie a grade, it's a 3.5. I think it potentially could go up to a 4 in time. This is one that I definitely will revisit again. But as it stands just now, sit somewhere between I like it and I really like it. Uh, Once again, it shows a great understanding of the facets or the ability that Fulci appeared to wield with ease. This movie just feels incredibly easy um, in its constructions. So... I, I do like that aspect as well. So 3.5 out of 5 for this movie. 